Are you searching for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Where is God in the midst of COVID-19? What is going to happen? Hello and welcome to Hope Spot on Shalom World. I'm your host, Robert Fiducia from Nashville, Tennessee in the United States. And Hope Spot is meant to give you perspective, insight, and hope during this time of COVID-19. And today our topic is eternity and this pandemic. And today I am joined by two very special and engaging guests. The first I have a real connection with, he was on the national evangelization teams in Australia and I was in the United States. His name is Jude Antoine, and he is the head of a ministry called Kerygma Ministry. He is a lay preacher, teacher, and he's also a husband and father. Jude, welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. And also joining us is Archbishop Christopher Prouse from Canberra Goulburn, and he is uh, a priest of Melbourne, uh, but was uh, consecrated as a as a bishop, and also has served on faculty as a moral theologian. I have had the honor of working with him as his animator at World Youth Days on two different occasions, and I was very excited to have him to join us for this show. Uh, so welcome to you, Archbishop Prouse. Thank you for having me on your show, Robert. So the first question I want to get into, and it is rather blunt, and I'm going to be very straightforward with it, and, and that is we're talking about eternity, and eternity has to do with what lies beyond death. So why is it, from your perspective, why is it that, that humans are afraid of death? Why are we afraid of death? Archbishop, if I could begin with you. Well, uh, Robert, this is an enormous philosophical question, which has uh, been with humankind from the start. And why is there death? And uh, trying in many cases, particularly today's world, to avoid death. And uh, even the songs, you can see it in popular songs, Robert, you know, the old song, I'm going to live forever. In other words, uh, we've conquered space. We're now going to conquer even death. And uh, there's no relation there with what the Christ event has got to say about this, but it's sort of like the f final frontier. So uh, it's a big philosophical question. And, and so, Jude, how would you answer that? Why, why, why do you think that we're afraid of death as humans? I think it's a situation that man cannot control his destiny concerning death. Man can control every other situation and circumstance in his life, and man enjoys the pleasure of being in full control. But when it comes to death, whether he be the wealthiest person on earth, the most influential person on earth, he cannot control his destiny when it comes to death. And something that is beyond his control, that really scares him. And, and so here we are in this time of pandemic. And COVID-19 here in the United States, we are losing about 2,500 people per day. And that really is confronting us as humans. So, uh, Archbishop, to begin with you again, how do you think that, that COVID-19 is uniquely confronting us with the question of eternity? Well, uh, people uh, are very much focused on the health and the work-related issues, both the economy and the medical side, On the in the way they talk. You see it on the television every time. You can't get away from it. But uh, that's the talk on the lips. But the talk in the heart uh, is about uh, hope and peace. Where can we find hope in this despairing moment, in this veil of tears? We Catholics might use that expression. And... Um, how can, we, how can we respond to a, a disastrous situation with hope? And uh, this brings in the particular Christian charism, the particular uh, Christian instinct 
uh, that moves us front and centre towards the logic of Calvary, the logic of Golgotha, and the, the great wonderful surprise of the, uh, of the resurrection. So Archbishop, I want to pick up with something that you had just said, and that, that is about, about Christian hope. So here, here would be my request. If you could imagine that you are with a non-believer, what would you say to them? How would you describe the Christian hope in the face of eternity? Well, I think we'd have to be able to agree on certain propositions, Robert, and I think we can get a real lead in here from uh, uh, the great English theologian, uh, the convert from Anglicanism to Catholicism in the 19th century, who's now a saint, St. John Henry Newman. And in one of his famous homilies, he said, look, can we all agree, uh, believers or non-believers, on three basic propositions? The first one is, Life is short, death is certain, thirdly, eternity long. So I think uh, that gives us hope. If people can say, well, at least I get two out of three of those, we might have to talk about the eternity a bit more. Oftentimes people do talk about eternity in a very non-religious way. They just feel they're just going to live into some way. But we Christians have a particular perspective on that. But there is a foundation there, Robert, I think, that we can dialogue about hope to a world who may or may not believe in God. Jude, if I, if I could go to you with that, with that question, um, Christian hope, how, how are we able to communicate hope in the light of, of eternity and especially now in the light of, of this pandemic that we're in? Uh, Robert, um, I come from Asia, and right here in Asia, there is a, a sense of God, a notion of God even. Um, uh, people are generally uh, very receptive and open to the divine, to the transcendent in their life. Uh, and yet their understanding of death in the face of the transcendent, uh, of, of it, uh, eternity, is uh, probably very different from ours. Uh, there is notion of uh, reincarnation. There is notion of uh, being born in a different form of life. But uh, the Christian hope for you and I is that we, you and I, enjoy everlasting life in the presence of God, in the, in the atmosphere of surrounded by the love of God, surrounded by the peace of God. And that is the proposition that you and I have to offer as Christian hope in the context of this pandemic today. Mm. There's uh, a theologian that I uh, that strikes me as being very poignant uh, at this moment. And, and what he has said is, is that in, in light of suffering, that what we tell is the story of Jesus, that that is, that is the answer to, to human suffering. So, uh, Jude, I'm going to go to you again and ask you to elaborate a little bit on that. On what is it about the, the story of Jesus and that narrative that, that's so profound for Christians? I think Jesus is the only person, Robert, who has dared to make a claim, I am the resurrection and the life. No other person, Robert, no other great philosopher or teacher that has ever walked this earth has ever made a claim that he is beyond the power of death. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, 15, it's, uh, the writer to the Hebrews says that Jesus not only destroyed the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, but Jesus also freed all those who have been held in slavery by the fear of death. So I think as Christians, you and I have to propose Jesus as the resurrection and the life, who has the ability to conquer not just the fear of death, but he has the ability to break the death itself. And Archbishop, what is it about the narrative, the story of the person of Jesus that, and perhaps even to you personally, that, that you find so compelling and that gives you hope in the light of eternity in COVID-19? Well, the answer to that is a re really a reflection on Good Friday with Jesus on the Calvary Cross. And uh, it couldn't be more different, really, to the culture, the success cultures of the Western world. The Western world is basically saying, if you want to be happy, then show us your triumphs and your uh, and, uh, and um, the great things that you do, your trophies, your triumphs. But uh, the logic of Calvary is, uh, with the wounds of Jesus, is to show us your tears and your tragedies 
and in the wounds of Jesus, you will be healed. By his wounds, we are healed. So this is a completely different panorama to a success-orientated Western world. It slaps in the face uh, of a sort of half-truth that's given, and Christianity gives the full truth that we can be happy in this world and participate in this world for the greater common good. But at the very same time, we start where we start with failure because on the Calvary cross, the sins of the world have been trans transformed into the resurrection that God the Father gives Jesus and Jesus takes us with him. So that's the good news. That's the charisma. And uh, I think it's a good news for today's world too. Yeah. Well, and, and Jude, just mentioning the charisma, I know that, uh, that that's your ministry is charisma ministry, which is which is the, the preaching of, of Jesus, of the, the life, the death, the resurrection of, of Jesus. And, and it strikes me that there are certain moments that, that do confront humanity. So going to that idea, uh, there's a, a famous atheist, and it's not my intention just to belabor atheism right now. That, that's not my intention at all. But nonetheless, there are some things that confront the, quest, uh, the Christian from the atheistic questions. And this was something that struck me, the, the, the well-known uh, speaker, atheist, Christopher Hitchens, before he died, and he was diagnosed with cancer, someone had asked him about deathbed conversions. And he said a deathbed conversion is the most cynical thing that he could imagine. I don't believe that. But if you could, Jude, why would you say that, that it is not cynical, that when confronted with death, it may be a very appropriate response. How would you respond to that to say that uh, deathbed conversion is cynical? Yes, Robert, I, I don't think that deathbed conversion is, is uh, cynical. Um, in fact, it is when an, a person is confronted with death that he has to make the most important and life-changing decisions of his life. Uh, I don't know whether you guys are aware, but uh, in December 2019, I had a heart attack and my heart actually stopped for four minutes. I saw myself in a tunnel and, uh, well, after four minutes, I was uh, resuscitated and brought back to life. And confronted with death, I had to come to terms with really life-changing decisions. And I think it is at the moment when an individual is confronted with death that he has to come to terms with how he has lived his life and what his life is going to be like. What is he going to change with his life? And it is at this point that you and I can propose the most life-changing proposition that Jesus offers this eternal life to an individual. And Archbishop, for you, how, how are you uh, seeing that? Just the, the idea that, that a deathbed conversion would be a, a cynical uh, decision, a cynical move. Yes, I certainly don't see it in that way. And it was lovely to hear Jude share personally about uh, his brush with death. Uh, I've had good health, thanks be to God. But in the 40 years I've been a priest, I have been with people uh, just before their death many, many, many people, and uh, it's hardly a cynical moment. It's a, a moment where they if, they, if they're given an opportunity, do reflect over their life as it comes to its, its uh, earthly end, and nine times out of ten they are reflecting. They, there's a sense of repentance that they've had their priorities wrong. What they thought was important no longer is important, and um, it, it is, uh, comes to the, the true point of Christianity that we're an encounter religion, the sense of repentance, that they've had their priorities wrong, what they thought was important were life and death moments, the, the encounter with Jesus who is the, the victory over death and the hope of eternal life is a great joy and a great hope. And so hope is not a philosophical or intellectual uh, um, sort of accomplishment, but it's a, a divine human encounter with the God of all for love and forgiveness. And therefore these death bed uh, repentance, as I haven't experienced with many, many people as cynical, but quite the opposite, deep hope, deep compassion, closeness with God, and the great joy of repentance, even in the last moments. 
I, I'm struck by by your use of the of the word hope. Now he's a he's a bit of a controversial theologian, but nonetheless, there, there's something that that Edward Skillabix, the the Dutch theologian, had said that other religions have faith, other religions have love, but hope is something that is uniquely Christian. And mm. I, I I imagine he was saying that because of this of this hope for for eternity. Uh, so, Archbishop, would you agree with that? Would you just say that that there is something unique to the Christian faith uh, to the virtue of hope? Well, I'd have to see what Skillebeck said in that context. But in comparison to other great world religions, uh, going back to what I just said before, uh, Christianity is a encounter religion. That it's not sort of uh, an illumination religion of uh, of a philosophical nature. But we're saying that the God of all hope has come down to us in the person of Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God, and that is called grace. And grace, when met with the openness in the human heart, is the greatest hope. Nine times out of ten, they are reflecting. They, there's a sense of repentance, that they've had their priorities wrong, what they thought was important. Their death is no longer victorious. You know, the scriptures talk about death. Where is your victory? Where is your sting? It's gone because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that fills us with great joy. And the cousin of joy is hope. Hmm. So a question for uh, for you, Jude. Um, is this changing the way that you preach, the way that you teach? This is a unique moment w- with COVID-19. I, I was talking to my father who is 77 years old, and he just said, I have never seen anything like this in my life. Is it changing how you present the gospel now? Robert, um, I, I'm very convinced that this is really uh, a moment of grace, an unprecedented time in the, in the history of the, the church. It is not a moment of problem or it's not a moment of crisis in the church. It's a moment of opportunity for the church. I, in my own personal experience, Robert, I've seen that instead of people closing up, on the contrary, people are asking questions, pertinent questions about life and about eternity. And they are looking and they're searching for answers. And in the context of situations where governments have failed, financial systems have failed, health systems have failed, the only one who can provide security, the only one who can provide answers for eternity is Jesus. So you and I are uh, are invited to to bring this message of good news, of the life and the peace that Jesus promises, even when confronted with death. I'm going to ask the two of you to, to give me and to give the viewers a little bit of homework. Uh, there is the, the great quote from the rule of St. Benedict going back to the 5th century. And, and St. Benedict said, keep death before you daily. And that may sound a little bit morbid, but he really is saying, keep eternity in front of you. So this would be my question to you is, would you be able to supply us with some questions? Because Jude, as you had mentioned, there are some things that are confronting humanity and there's an openness to things that we may not have been open to before. So would you be able to supply some questions that we could reflect on beyond this episode that would get us to think a little bit more deeply about our own life and about eternity? Jude, I'd, I'd begin with you if I could. So yes, Robert, uh, I would like to propose two things. Uh, Number one, I think uh, very important, always live as with the consciousness of death in your life, as if it was your last day. And having lived with the consciousness of death, uh, uh, as, as I said just now, I experienced my heart attack in December 2019, and that changed my entire perspective in life. Uh, and I live with the consciousness of death every day. As someone beautifully said about a priest when he's ordained, he should celebrate Mass as if it was his first Mass, his last Mass, and his only Mass. And so always live with this consciousness of death. And number two, if, if, it, if I am living with this consciousness of death every day, then how would I live my life? What would I be doing with my life? 
Well, would I be going on a vacation? Would I be having the biggest meal of my life? Well, for me, uh, Robert, um, if it was my last day, I would be leading people to encounter Christ. And I think um, that would be the most important thing for me, to allow somebody to en encounter his love and experience his love and to meet him and to encounter him. And that would be the most important thing for me. So the two questions I would like to leave with the audience and yourself and even myself is this, um, who am I thinking besides myself? Am I thinking of someone else besides myself, somebody else who needs this hope in his or her life? And the second question is this, um, how would I be able to propose this hope uh, life and peace to this individual. Spoken like a true teacher and preacher. Thank you, Jude. And and to uh, to you, Archbishop. What what would you ask us? What what would be our homework if you were going to give us some questions to reflect on? Well, my first question would be quite similar to Jude's, and um, that uh, given the fact that life is very short and death is very certain and eternity very long, uh, living with those three principles. How would your life change now if tomorrow your earthly life had a big question mark on it? And that requires you to um, be silent and still before the Lord and to be very honest about your life. The second thing is practical. I think practical charity is very important at this moment. Otherwise, we end up uh, being uh, in a bit of a bubble. But given the fact that we have a global pandemic at the moment, that everybody uh, is, is conscious of this, can you in your neighbourhood, your family or in your community uh, locate uh, some people, of two or three, that you can keep a loving eye on practically? Mm. There must be a practical charity component here. Otherwise, uh, we failed the test of you did it to me. <laughs> mm. So find mm. somebody who is far more fragile than you are, and be a, a ambassador of hope for them in a practical way. His Grace Christopher Prouse, Archbishop of Canberra Goldburn, thank you for joining us. And then also to you, Jude Antoine, President of Kerygma Ministry. We are grateful for both of you coming and sharing your, your wisdom, your insights, and your heart with us here at, uh, at Hope Spot on Shalom World. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. And viewers, we thank you for joining us. And hopefully this is causing some reflection within you and prompting some questions. Uh, be sure to join us as we continue to explore how we are to live in light of COVID-19. Thank you again. We'll see you next time here at Hope Spot on Shalom World. Jesus said, go out to the whole world and announce the good news. And that's what Shalom is doing, is bringing the good news of the Holy Spirit in action, renewing the face of the earth so that all people may know how good is the Lord, how beautiful is the work of salvation. Thank you, Shalom, for all you do to reach out, to lead the faith forward. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.